So continuing our discussion on the symmetry of lift, um, there's one concept that you need to be aware of if you're not already aware of it, and that's the fact that as you double the airspeed across a lifting surface, it doesn't matter whether it's a, a uh, rotor blade on a helicopter or if it's a wing on an airplane, everything else being the same, the same angle of attack, if you were to double the airspeed across that lifting surface, across that wing, the amount of lift does not double, it actually quadruples. So it's an exponential increase in lift as we increase the amount of airspeed across any lifting surface. Okay. Now getting back to uh, teetering and the uh, compensatory uh, action of the blade with teetering to, to uh, compensate for the symmetry of lift, we need to look a little more specifically at what actually is happening with a retreating blade versus the advancing blade. And if we were to plot out the amount of teetering as you increase in airspeed, we'd find out that it's not a linear increase. In other words, the same amount of increase in airspeed uh, on any given part of the, the uh, airspeed range does not produce the same amount of increase in teetering. If you had a, uh, a 10 mile an hour increase in airspeed, say from 0 to 10 knots, or from 10 to 20 knots, or even 20 to 30 knots, that produces a relatively small increase in the amount of teetering that has to occur on the rotor blades. If you're to look on up into higher air speeds of say uh, 80 to 90 knots, or 90 to 100 knots, or 100 knots to 110 knots, those 10 knot increments increase in air speed produce a much, much greater increase in the amount of teetering and so we'll talk about why. Well, if you were to plot, again, if you were to plot it out on a coordinate graph and on the x-axis, on the, uh, the horizontal axis on the graph, you put airspeed, 0, 10, 20, 30, on up through, say, a V and E of 130. And you were to plot that out on the x-axis. And on the y or the upright or, or uh, vertical axis, you were to put degrees of teetering. And again, for this illustration, we'll use 0 to 11 degrees. Most Helicopters in the U.S. can compensate with up to 11 degrees or so of teetering, 10 to 11 degrees. And if we were to start, so if we started out on the on the graph at zero, uh, there is no teetering because there's no airspeed, and uh, the amount of teetering would be zero. But as we increase on up the, to faster and faster airspeeds, the amount of teetering uh, has to increase. So on the lower part of the chart, you know, from zero to air speeds of say 70 or 80, or that sort of thing, you have a relatively small amount of teetering that occurs, maybe some two to three degrees is about it. But as you increase on up the speed, uh, or increase your speed rather, the percentage of increase in teetering uh, becomes significant. And all right, so why? Well, again, remember, as you double the air speed across a lifting surface, you quadruple the amount of lift, okay? So if you stop and think about it, on the advancing side of the rotor disc, this as a, the blade is coming around into the uh, slipstream, pretty much the entire blade is producing lift. There is no stalled region on, on the advancing, there were no appreciable stalled region on the advancing side of the rotor blade. Well, if you stop and think about what happens on the retreating side of the rotor blade, well, let's look at, a, again, let's illustrate an, an example of a uh, tip speed of 500 miles per hour and a four speed of 100 uh, miles per hour through the air. You could use knots or miles per hour either way. So your rotational speed of the blade is about 500 miles an hour, but your forward speed through the air is 100. Well, that's about one-fifth of your rotational speed. So the first one-fifth of this blade from the hub all the way out to one-fifth the way up the blade is not producing any lift. In fact, it has reverse airflow uh, in that section of the blade when it's on the retreating side because the, the air is actually flowing from the trailing edge of the blade across to the advancing side of the blade, or the leading edge of the blade. And so the, one, the first one-fifth of that uh, rotor blade is, is basically stalled and not producing any lift. Right? And if you stop and think about it, the faster and faster that you go, that area that is not producing any lift as your airspeed increases, it becomes a greater percentage of the rotational speed of the blade, and that area becomes larger and larger. Let's say that it was possible to go 200 miles an hour in a, in a uh, rotor craft, and the first two-fifths of the retreating side would be producing essentially no lift at all. 
Okay, so, so so when you look at increasing speed, there's two things that's happening. Number one, if you look at the advancing side, as the speed doubles, let's say, or increases, we get an exponential increase. Remember, the amount of lift produced is exponential, not linear, right? So as we double the airspeed or increase the airspeed on the advancing side of the blade, the increase in the amount of lift is going to be exponential. You get a, uh, quite a bit of lift increase on the advancing side. But at the same time, as we increase our airspeed, the resultant uh, flow or air, the uh, average speed of the air going across the, the uh, blade in the correct uh, direction from the leading edge to the trailing edge is actually getting slower, all right? So you get an exponential decrease in the amount of lift based on the decrease in the airspeed going across the blade on the retreating side. But it's even worse than that. You're actually losing lifting surface. As we go faster, the stalled region on the, on the uh, retreating side is becoming larger and larger, all right? So again, if we were to plot this out on a coordinate graph, you would see that, <clears throat> I made up one here, don't anybody make fun of my graph here. If you were to start out, you'll notice that, and again, what I did here was I plot, plotted out the airspeed on the x-axis down here, and we've got degrees of teetering on the y-axis here. So you first start out with relatively normal, uh, or really docile airspeeds of zero to up to about 70 or 80 knots or so, and you only have about, um, oh, about two to three degrees of teetering. But as we increase the airspeed, two thing, again, two things are happening. Number one, you're getting an exponential increase in the amount of lift on the advancing side, an exponential decrease on the amount of lift on the retreating side, and you're losing lifting surface. So as this, this uh, line initially starts out relatively linear, now it becomes rather steep on the up, upswing. Why is this important? This is important because if you look at the graph, and I plotted from 130 knots up to about where how much teetering you would have, and that, that would give you roughly 11 degrees of teetering here. And if you were to compare 120 knots and bring that up, you're gonna see that between 130 knots and 120 knots is a significant increase in the amount of teetering as you go from 120 knots up to 130 knots. Well, guess what? If you were to slow your airspeed down from 120 knots to 130 knots, you would have a significant decrease in the amount of teetering, okay? All right, so why is this important? Well, the next uh, discussion that we're gonna have in this series is gonna be over retreating blade stall. And it's important that you understand what's happening with increasing airspeed. Again, in review, as you increase the airspeed on a helicopter, specifically on a helicopter, as you increase the airspeed on the helicopter, on the advancing side of the rotor disc, the amount of lift is increasing exponentially, and on the retreating side of the rotor disc, the amount of airflow across the blade and thus lift is not only decreasing exponentially, but it's even worse than that because we're losing lifting surfaces. So it can be, so as that happens, there's more lift produced on the right side of the uh, disc, the advancing side, and much less produced on the left side or the retreating side. So what happens to the amount of teetering? It has to increase to compensate again. And again, small increases, once you get up near B and E, uh, small increases in airspeed can have a significant increase in the amount of teetering. And small decreases in airspeed can have a significant decrease in the amount of teetering that occurs. And this is very, very important to understand. And when we get into retreating blade stall, we're going to touch on this uh, again uh, in great depth, actually.